in the Bronx and I, um, I'm here today uh, make, it makes me think about when this all started back in March I remember when we started to hear about coronavirus in March I was seeing patients in my clinic as I do every week uh, and two of the staff members in my clinic two people I care about came back with positive tests so we then brought all of our staff together and this is before we really knew what was going to happen with coronavirus we brought our staff together and I looked around the room and everybody had the same look on their face how serious really is this? How bad is this going to get? We all know what happened next, though. In March and April of this year were two of the worst months in our country's history. We lost tens of thousands of New Yorkers. It was one of the scariest times of my life, and it was one of the worst times of many people in New York's lives. We cannot let that happen again. Now, I want to directly address the question of why are we here today, and what does the data show? I'm going to give you a very clear data point. Where we stand here physically today, there are three times as many cases, new cases every day of coronavirus. If that was not the case, three times as many here on this pavement where we stand today, we would not be here today. We are here because three times the number of new cases every day is extremely concerning. But there is good news. We can help. In New York City, as you know, we have one of the lowest rates of coronavirus of any big city in the whole country. One of the ways we've been able to do that is through testing and tracing people so we can figure out how we can get them to isolate and not transmit the virus to others and how we can figure out who they may have exposed to the virus so that we can give them help too. Since starting the test and trace core in June, we've driven down across New York City the number of new cases every single day by two thirds. We can do the same thing here to address the fact that there's a threefold increase, but we can't do it alone. Across New York City today, we're able to reach 90% of new cases of coronavirus. And for 80% of nearly 80% of them, we're able to complete interviews, get them to isolate, figure out how we can help them, and ask them who they may have exposed so that we can reach out to them and keep them safe as well. In the communities that are seeing an uptick now, more data. We're seeing right now in those communities a threefold increase in two other communities as well. That's why we're concerned. And what I want to do is we've identified 2,000 cases and 3,000 contacts. I want them all to be a part of our program because we know our program works. It has worked in the biggest city in the country. It will work here. 
but it won't work if we don't all work together. So I want to ask for your help in terms of making this work, getting people to participate, getting people to isolate if they're a positive case, getting people to share with us who they may have exposed so we can do our work. We want to do the work for you. The other thing we want to do to help you too, and we've been in touch with local rabbis, you've seen us around the last few days. We're handing out now more than 200,000 masks. Look around. We're handing out, oh, thank you for joining us today. <laughs> exactly. We're handing out masks to everybody, including us uh, people in school. Everybody should wear a mask. That's singularly such an important thing that we can do. And we're now, I'm going to tell you, more than 300 synagogues across New York City, we're arming them with masks to help. So that when you go to celebrate Rosh Hashanah or Yom Kippur, we want you to be able to put on a mask and wear the mask in your synagogue. We want to do that to help. But it's important to say, we are here today to tell you we're worried and to give you our firm offer to help. If there is anything humanly possible that we can do to help you more than what we're already doing, don't keep it a secret. Just tell us today. I'm happy to even stay after here. We want to know what we can do to help. And between handing out hundreds of thousands of masks, uh, creating a program where we can really keep people safe, giving them resources to stay at home. We'll do anything in our power to help you. Help us to help you. I, I am here to help. Thank you. Well, Dr. Dr. Wait, wait. One question. You do understand that 40% of the tax and the test results are incorrect. Number one. Fact. Because you didn't get that information. I didn't tell you. Two. You're telling us that triple, that we've got up in triple uh, in the office. Your... My question to you is, if you come to any of my two hospitals in the neighborhood, it's one coronavirus. So with your uptick, we are all these people. And yeah. finally, I don't know, maybe they're home, maybe we're hiding them somewhere in the basement, so you don't see them. But I haven't seen them. And third of all, where is all your test results? You and I know that 50% or 40% of your test results are warm. So your uptick numbers are warm. How come I don't see you have test results all over? Instead, all you have is you're violent, you're not no, no, no. Let, let me. I'm gonna. I'm gonna only put away your mask. I agree with all of you. I agree with anything you say, guys. Everything you say. My question is: Yesterday, I was watching the news and I saw the great leader of the world tell the citizens and the states. That there's a vaccine that is coming out, out and you are not allowed to use it. Okay. So okay. 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 And there are people who are there at this press conference who would like these men to put on masks, and obviously they have not yet. So let's listen in, and we'll see where we're going to take this. I'm going to give quick answers to his three questions, as I promised, Then I'm going to allow Dr. Varma to speak, and then we're going to listen, and then we're going to let everybody ask questions. Okay? Well, my PLM lies, we stupid mayor, and wear a mask. Where's the mask for that? You asked me three questions. I have to remember all three. Okay. Um, your first question was. Um, okay. Your first question was, are we seeing an uptick in the number of in people going to the hospital? Um, so thankfully, we have not seen the same uptick yet that we did when coronavirus hit in March and April. That means we have time to act now. We're here today because if we do, you said you agreed with me. If we do everything I said. The, the virus would be suppressed in this community fairly quickly. We can do this together. The second question is where, where are the troops we're bringing in and all that stuff? We're bringing in 12 new mobile units, just like this one on, on a Tuesday this coming week. Um, and your third question was vaccine. We're, we're going to make the vaccine, I mean, whatever it's, it, to the extent to which it's under our purview, we're going to make it equitably available to everybody um, as soon as humanly possible. This will be done. We're pulling this. Thank you. Thank God.
Doc, thank you. You'll be, you can always call me. Okay. I'm willing to help you guys out. Sorry, guys. Thank you. Okay, you are watching the press conference that is happening in the Great Sand Park in Brooklyn. They're talking about the uptick in cases there, but there are members of the community who are not happy. Uh, they're wondering why they're not seeing an increase in the number of people going to the hospitals in that area with COVID-19. Uh, Dr. Ted Long, very patient. He's with the uh, test and test test and trace corporation and he was explaining if we can get this under control right now we will not see that uptick in the hospitalizations that we saw in say march and april he talked about the 12 mobile units that they'll be bringing into the neighborhoods uh, that are affected there are about three neighborhoods in particular that they're worried about that have seen triple the number of positive cases in recent days and that's what they want to get a handle on they're asking the community to work with them um, and we will see where that goes, but right now there's a, a lot of questions because members of the community were there, they were angry, they were not wearing masks, and health officials decided to stop the news conference. We will have much more for you as we go through the day, but again, an uptick in certain neighborhoods, three times as many new cases. They're concerned about it. They're bringing in new, new mobile units, 12 of them, and hoping to not see an uptick in the hospitalizations in the coming weeks. Introducing the new